Well, coral bleaching is mostly related to water temperature. You know, the, what we think of as corals, soft corals and hard corals have symbiotic algae in their tissues. The coral is an animal, but it has these algae called zooxanthellae, which are responsible for producing most of the energy that the coral actually gets to live. Water temperatures get too hot. Uh, that relationship tends to break down and the corals actually end up uh, expelling or getting rid of the zooxanthellae. And this is what we call, what is manifested as coral bleaching, where the, the, the zooxanthellae provide most of the color to the corals. And once they are gone, the coral tissue is relatively transparent. And then you can see the skeleton uh, calcium carbonate skeleton of the coral beneath the tissue and it looks white or bleached. You know here in Palau normally our temperatures are about <clears throat> during a year uh, from 28 to 30 degrees centigrade and uh, occasionally temperatures can go over that 30 degree threshold for periods of time and it's related to a lot of different factors. But once coral, the water temperatures go over about 30 degrees centigrade, uh, that starts stressing the coral and their symbiotic relationships with the zooxanthellae. And if that persists for a period of a few weeks or, or more, and particularly if it gets a little higher than 30, maybe up to 31, then coral bleaching starts. So it isn't an instant thing. The corals start expelling the zooxanthellae and then if high temperatures persist for, for weeks, uh, then we'll end up with a full-scale coral bleaching event. Now, why does coral bleaching kill corals? Well, because as I mentioned, the, the zooxanthellae provide most of the energy, the food to the coral. Once they are gone, the coral are sort of living on borrowed time where uh, they can catch a certain amount of food from the, the plankton and such, but they're no longer getting uh, energy from photosynthesis. So that unless uh, things are reversed fairly quickly, the coral will actually die, starve to death basically, and die. Once it dies, the tissue disintegrates and you're left with nothing but a dead coral skeleton which then that quickly gets overgrown with algae, uh, and that's the end of the coral. Bleaching, basically with the mortality of corals, um, we start to see uh, changes in the environment. It's a very delicate ecosystem. And so sometimes you'll see some changes in the fish community that's associated with those reefs. Um, and so that will affect the fishermen, fisherwomen, whoever is in the communities that, that are going to these areas. Maybe one area that was very dominated with a certain kind of fish that everybody would like to eat. Um, maybe for one reason or another it changed. Um, and so you don't see that uh, same, commu same community in fish that you used to see back in the day. Basically what we do in Palau is uh, Palauans are naturally conservationist. Um, going back in the day, you know, they already had their system of conservation um, Cons called bull, right? Where the chiefs and, and the community, you know, they said that there's one area that's low in this or low in that, and then they would just go and try and protect it. The What we do here at the center and what I love about it is we kind of take that same concept but use it in the modern sense of, of science and putting a quantifiable number on it and then presenting that back to the community. Um, because sometimes it's easier to say, you know, I visually see a lot and then now I visually don't see any. Um, and so we try and use, um, combine, you know, traditional knowledge and with uh, modern, modern science knowledge to try and um, sync the two and give that back to the community. So that's what I really love about the center and what we do here. Um, and then in addition, not only to Palau, but we also, the data that we have, we're able to sh um, present it internationally, worldwide. So other people around the world who are studying certain situations, um, certain species or uh, changes such as climate change or uh, bleaching, you know, we can share that data with them. And so we're, we're elevated to the international level of data sharing when it comes to the science community. The corals 
are important part of this water because the corals are protection for the small fish and also when fish lay their eggs also the 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 egg of the fish goes to the coral they stay there and then they what they mature in order to grow so when you have nice corals you have that small fish and then that small fish will attract the big fish and then the big fish will attract the bigger fish then the bigger fish attract the bigger fish then it attract the shark so this cycle attract the tourists coming to the island so if the coral are started bleaching and they what they disappear then we will not have that that chain we will lose that chain so the coral bleaching is uh, it will retain this cycle and when you don't have nice corals then you know tourists will not interested coming to the island my name is uh, Simeon Agurdong and I have uh, I've carried a uh, uh, chief title, the other Telwang from Rulwog in Airai. But I'm a full time fisherman and I know the fish usually stay in coral when they are small. So if the coral die, all the fish, all the small fish die. So it's really affect the uh, fishermen if the corals from Palau are going to be gone. Uh, for the uh, Palaun knows that if if the coral or seam dead, then we have to move out from it so it develop by itself. What we do, we don't have a choice, so we just move out from the area. So that means uh, our area is getting small. So at this time, I I am uh, inside fishing most of the time, but now I try to push Palawan to move out to outside the reef to help inside to develop.